World War II was initiated on September 1st, 1939 and would officially end almost 6 years to the date on September 2nd, 1945. To date, it's been the largest and deadliest war in history with an estimated 40 to 50 million deaths believed to have been caused directly because of the war itself. Of course, even that number may be underestimated as the irreversible damage the war caused people for years after, either physically or mentally, could also be attributed to shortened life. We know how things played out with occupied Germany and the Axis powers eventually falling to the Allies in which the UK, the US, among a handful of other countries took down a power hungry dictator. But what if things as we know it historically changed? Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what if World War II ended in a stalemate? What's happening guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for today, Jared Bronstein, and we got some more World War II alternate history coming your way. As always, let us know if you have any suggestions for other questions you'd like us to answer on our channel, and make sure to stick around to the end of this one to see if your comment got featured. As is the case with changing up history, the way everything presently is would certainly be different. However, instead of focusing on what things would potentially presently be like, had World War II ended in a stalemate, let's start by focusing on the immediate impact it would have. For starters, the nuclear bombing likely would have never happened, Hitler probably wouldn't have committed suicide, and a third world war almost definitely would have happened by now, or would be happening as I record this video. Many attribute the storming of Normandy as being a huge turning point for the Allies winning the war, as this allowed the Soviets to take the majority of Eastern Europe back, with Hitler sending all he had to the West in hopes of fending off the American, Canadian, and British forces. What initially started on June 6th, 1944, would eventually be the final coffin in the nail, or so it seems, ending the war in Europe. I guess you could say the start of what was to come. With Hitler taking his own life on April 30th and the war in Europe officially ending on May 8th, 1945, it seemed things were officially closing out. However, as we know, Japan was still refusing to back down, and this would eventually lead to the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which resulted in approximately up to 225,000 deaths the majority being innocent civilians. Following the nuclear attack, the Soviets declared war on Japan and six days later, they would officially surrender to the Allies. On September 2nd, the war would officially end, with all remaining countries agreeing and signing an official document, declaring an end to it all. Now, given that the United States were brought into the war officially after the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, it's incredibly important to determine whether or not the stalemate were to happen prior or post this attack. Although the United States were helping the Allied powers from afar, once they officially got attacked, it wasn't much longer before they would officially declare war. If the stalemate were to happen prior to this attack, it's likely that Germany and the Axis powers would have been in control of a lot of countries, assuming the war ended at some point in 1941. By the end of 1941, the Axis powers were in control of the majority of Europe, from France all the way across past Ukraine and everything in between. At this point, they were also pushing the Soviets back, so they actually had control of parts of modern day Russia. As north as Finland, with the exception of Sweden, down to Italy and Greece, the majority of Europe, with the exception of Britain, of course, was occupied by Axis powers at this point. So, as you can imagine, if for whatever reason both sides decided to call it quits to this point, the majority of Europe would have likely been fascist or at the very least under the powers of the Nazi regime. If we were to look at things post Pearl Harbor attack, the United States would be involved at this point, but assuming that the stalemate were to occur prior to the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and prior to Hitler taking his own life, then the Axis powers wouldn't control as much of Europe. By 1944, at least toward the end of the year, the majority of the Axis powers controlled countries had fallen to the Allies, including France, Hungary, Romania, Italy, Poland, Ukraine, and plenty of others. For the war to end at this point, again, Germany would still be under the Nazi regime, but they wouldn't have nearly as much land as they would have, assuming the stalemate was agreed upon in 1941. Truth be told, it seems the outcome of how things play out would likely be the same, the only difference would be who would have more land and a stronger army. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind, had World War II ended in a stalemate, that a third world war would have happened by now, or it would currently be ongoing as I record this video. Many attribute World War I to be the reason we had a second world war, with the latter simply being a continuation of the first war. There was about 20 years between the two wars, and the reasoning for the second war was due to all the political and economical instability that was a direct cause of the first world war. So for things to end in a stalemate, especially with the people in power such as Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin, as well as Mussolini, all men who were clearly power hungry and wanted to control as much as they could, I don't see the stalemate lasting very long. Long, meaning at some point another attack would almost certainly happen. And even if the Allied powers controlled most of Europe, I still wouldn't be all that surprised to see a German offensive, with the stalemate really only acting as an intermission, if you will, for the war. It would just be a reason for both sides to train more soldiers, improve their artillery, and repair any of the issues with their militaries respectively. We can't forget that Japan was the last country to bow out of the war as well, only after the nuclear bombing, so to assume a German and Japanese invasion of Western Europe even in 1944, given the stalemate, 
it isn't so crazy. Not to say that things with the USSR would be a walk in the park, but again, with this stalemate, these countries wouldn't necessarily be expecting another random attack. And it wouldn't happen a week after they agreed to stop fighting. I'd say possibly around 1960 or maybe even 1970, things pick up again. The Vietnam War actually started in 1955, so for the Axis powers, or the remaining ones at least, to see this as an opportunity to team up with the communist minded countries would only be beneficial. With the United States fighting their own war, European countries wouldn't have as much support as they previously did, which could also be quite enticing for the Axis powers. There really is no telling how things could have played out, say if Germany tried to expand once again in the late 50s and early 60s. The USSR was also a believer in communism, so along with China, the two countries could possibly form an alliance, especially with the mutual interest of fighting off a Japanese invasion. Much like what did happen, the USSR and China could potentially team up with the Allied powers, not so much because they see eye to eye, but because all the countries would have a common interest in bringing down the Axis powers of Germany and Japan. Now as I always say, I'm no fortune teller so I can't say 100% for sure this would be the case. That being said, history is known to repeat itself and considering how it did happen before, I wouldn't be all that surprised if at some point nuclear warfare was still used. The only issue here would be where the attack would take place. Given that the China and Soviet alliance would be a true alliance, whereas the alliance that the two countries would have with the allied powers wouldn't be for any reason other than having a common enemy in the Axis powers, we'd actually have three groups or alliances fighting this war. The communists, the Axis and the allied powers would all be in this war, and even if the two alliances with the same interests were to take down the Axis powers once again in a potential third world war, who knows where that would leave things. It's likely that the USSR and China would want to retain more land than they originally started with, and this could be seen as a problem for the Allied powers, who would want to just give the respective countries back their land. Now there's no telling if this leads to a continued war, with the Allied powers now having to fend off China and the USSR, or if they just agree to new borders and the world as we know it is still completely different, as China and Russia could potentially be even bigger than they currently are geographically. There's also no telling how Hitler tries to move forward with Germany, even if his country did fall once again and was defeated. Who knows if he would have been assassinated or would have taken his own life as we know he did historically. The atomic bomb may not have been used, but it's possible that the United States decides to use nuclear warfare during the Vietnam War. But again, who knows if that war would have even broken out, given that World War II ends in a stalemate for a brief period of time before resuming and likely being dubbed World War III. There was also the Cold War, which started in 1947, which makes it even more difficult to see the USSR and China teaming up with the Allied powers. And if the US were to use nuclear warfare during the Vietnam War, who knows how the USSR would have responded, potentially doing what the Americans did to the Japanese cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima on US soil. As you can clearly see, any of these scenarios would significantly change the world and life as we know it. There are so many variables, too many in fact, to fully determine how things play out here. So I had to give a few scenarios. One thing that does appear to be certain, if World War II did end in a stalemate, it certainly would not have ended there. With all the economical instability, as well as different politics going on in all the different countries, which as we know would spawn numerous civil wars, there's just no way that the second world war ends with a stalemate and doesn't eventually continue on even if it is a third world war. How things play out is to be determined as it's also quite possible that the USSR or the USA decide to use nuclear warfare on some of the Axis powers almost to show each other what they're capable of without directly attacking one another. At the end of the day, as I always say, I'm just glad things panned out the way they did because if they didn't, I don't even know if I'd be alive. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with the fact that I have a life so I'd rather not change that. So I'm, I'm just good with this. That does it for this one guys. Let me know your thoughts on this one down below if you guys agree or disagree with my take. If the war ended in a stalemate, do you think it would really stop there or would someone invade another country and eventually lead into an inevitable third world war? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What if China became a superpower? Eula said, neither China nor the USA can live without each other. It's pretty much a toxic yin yang. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I feel like if they completely cut off each other, like fully, Things would change a lot, but I'm not gonna say they can't live without each other. Uh, I mean, as we know, they don't have the best relationship. I know there's a lot of imports and exports, but I don't know. I feel like, you know, you kind of just find a way, and that's kind of what I like. I think like our lives would change significantly in regards to, you know, accessibility of certain things and, and the cost, but I don't think the countries would necessarily fail. Jason Chen said, well, if China takes over, we could kiss goodbye to YouTube and Google because in China, they're banned. I'm pretty sure they have their own, uh, their own like YouTube and Google though. They have their own search engines and stuff. Their own, you know, I think they have their own Facebook. Like they have a lot of their own versions of websites that we use. It's just run by the government. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say goodbye, but like you'd have a version of it. But I, again, I don't, I don't see it happening anytime soon. So also I saw someone reply to your comment saying VPNs, but again, I don't know. I actually know someone that says VPNs do work in China, but again, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how easy it is to get one and to use it and you know what the legalities are. So 
that that would be up to you guys. But don't worry, because right now this isn't happening, so it's fine. El Kalui said, what if Wi-Fi never existed? Well, I can tell you right now, if that was the case, my KD in COD would be way up because I'd be hardwired and I wouldn't lag, nor would I have the excuse that my Wi-Fi is bad to be the reason why I have a bad KD. But hey, it is what it is. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. As I always say, guys, let us know in the comments down below any questions that you guys want to see on our channel, whether it's history, whether it's an SCP, which we haven't done in a very, very long time, whether it's something about space or marine life, whatever it is, this is life's biggest questions, and life is full of so many crazy questions that make you think, oh my god. So let us know in the comments down below if you guys have any questions at all you want us to cover, because we are listening to the people. Power to the people, it's you guys. So let us know. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. That's it for this one, and we'll see you guys soon.